Hey guys, for my final on intro to hermeneutics, I wanted to cover kind of the overarching point that I spotted throughout the class, and that is that context is king. Um, without context, it can be really hard to dig out the true intended meaning that the author had for each verse, right? Um, and so I wanted to cover and expand on a few verses where without context, it can be um, hard to understand and maybe even misleading um, to dig into a verse, right? Um, so my first example would be Isaiah 14. Um, so we see in Isaiah a, a, a small passage. Um, it goes something like this. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly and on the utmost heights as a fawn. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Right, so without context, uh, I was left imagining Satan's fall from the heavenly places, right? Um, but this was actually a poetic depiction of the Israelites' exile to Babylon and about the Babylon king, Nebuchadnezzar, um, who had claimed himself Lord and God and demanded worship from his subjugates, right? And so that kind of changes things a little bit when we're looking at it. Um, and the next example I, I had was of Jonah and the whale, and I'm sure we all heard this story in Sunday school. Um, but once digging into it, uh, it wasn't necessarily a whale at all, was it? Um, so Jonah 117 says that we see the Lord um, prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Um, fish or whale might seem trivial, right? Um, but without the context, we miss that the Ninevites, who he was called to preach to, um, they actually worshipped a the pagan god Dagon who was depicted as being half fish and half man, right? Um, and so without the context, we miss the imagery of this absurdly huge fish purposefully beaching itself on the, on, on the Nineveh shore um, and spewing out a man carrying the word of the Most High God, the God who created the seas, right? Having control over um, this gigantic fish that they had never seen before. So it's it's no wonder that they turned from their ways and and instantly accepted God uh, in Jonah's teachings, right? Um, and then the last example is of the account of Peter denying Christ, right? So I had always grown up with this image in my head of the longest night of Peter's life, right? He he just hours ago at dinner proclaimed that he would never deny Christ and then he watches Jesus um, be betrayed and captured, right? And so he actually assaults a Roman guard and cuts off his ear. Um, and although Jesus healed it right away, um, he no doubt was trying to distance himself from anybody who could put him at the scene of the crime, right? Um, and so we see time and time again, people recognizing him as a follower of Christ and they call him out and every time he denies it, right? Up until that third time, right? He denies Christ right as the sun is breaking over the horizon and this rooster somewhere in the background crows to signal the new, day um, when in react reality with the context we see that the jewish people were under roman control and there was roman guards posted everywhere through the night shift or the night watch um, and so the watch was actually broken down into four three-hour shifts right um, and the cock crow was actually the name of the trumpet sound that they would um, signal the shift change um, so that would happen every three hours and it would be a sound that, that Peter would be familiar with and, and would understand, right? And, and that the readers of this verse would understand. Um, and so we see then that it, it wasn't uh, a rooster, it wasn't a rooster crow, and it wasn't really at daybreak. Um, so getting the context for these verses can really sometimes paint them in a whole new light. Um, I think that in general we can make some accurate assumptions from verses that we read without all of the context, right? Um, but I th 
and maybe even find a way to apply those things in a good way to our lives. But I think that in doing so, we put on blinders to the majesty and the intricacies that, that appear in scripture. Um, and we risk missing out on some of what God wants us to know. Um, so that's why I think context is king. Thank you for your time.